Welcome to labmiss.com and our lab video series on Cisco ASA 1000V. You can find a complete list of ASA 1000V video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. As we mentioned back in the video SEC 0072, ASA 1000V Basic Edge Security Profile and Policies in VNMC mode, ASA 1000V has a concept of security profile and security profile interface. When you use VNMC to configure the ASA, the security profile interface are created automatically. However, in SDM mode, these interfaces need to be created manually. You can view the security profile interface as any other interfaces on an ASA that you can reference to in the configuration. A host that is assigned a security profile as part of the port profile will be placed behind the corresponding security profile interface. In this video, we will create security profiles interface on the Cisco ASA 1000V in SDM mode via CLI. We will configure basic ingress ACL and port address translation and apply them to host behind the ASA. Here's our lab setup. We have a redundant pair of ASA 1000V installed in ASDM mode. Now on the inside VXLAN 6010, we are going to create two security profile interface, one for the web servers and the other one for the database server. For the web server security profile, we do a basic ingress ACL with the permit all and a port address translation to the ASA outside interface.16. Now for the database server, we do an ingress ACL that permits only ICMP traffic and the port address translation to IP.18. Okay, so let's get on to the ASA command line right here. We do show IP uh, interface IP brief. You see right now, these are just the four default interface that came by with the ASA. Now what we're going to do is to create our first security profile interface for our web server. So the command is interface security profile, and we just need to select the number. You can see the range is between 1 and 256. So just give it a given number 1. From here on, we can just treat the interface just like any other ASA interface. So we'll give it a name. We'll call it web. We'll give a security level of 100. And then we need to create a security profile name that will be used or be, will be referenced from the, from the pro profile on the Nexus 1000V. So we're going to call it sec profile app one web. And then we just do no shut. And just as a comparison, if you remember back in the VNMC mode, the security profile name will be defined on the VNMC itself. But here, when you do the SDM mode, you provide the security profile name on the ASA. Okay, now that is for the web servers. Next, we're going to create another security profile, number two, for our database. So as a name, we'll call it DB. And for the security level, give it 100. And for the security profile name, we'll use sec profile app one DB, just to be consistent with what we have for the web server, and then with no shut. Okay, the last thing you want to do is to tie the security profile interface to the physical interface, and this interface is usually the ASA inside interface. So service, service interface, security profile, all, and then we tie it to the inside. Okay, now if you do show interface IP brief again, you can see now we have the two additional security profile interface shows up. Although it doesn't really have IP associated to it, since it's just a logical interface. Now that we have the interface to use, we can start with our access list configuration. For, for, first is for the web server. So this is going to be from the web server going to the outside of the ingress of the web security profile interface. And we say we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to create an access list called from web to designate the direction. And we're just going to permit IP any any. Okay, and then we do the access group from web. Direction is inbound or ingress to the interface, and our interface is web. We are going to do pretty much the same thing with the database security profile interface. So we'll create an ACL call from DB, permit ICMP any any, and then we'll deny everything else. So deny IP any any law. Okay, and then again, access group from DB, ingress to the interface DB. Okay. Now we need to create one more for our outside interface ingress. And at this point, we're just going to permit all. 
which means it's going to permit all the return traffic. If it's not part of the stateful table, things like the uh, ICMP should be allow or ICMP reply should be allowed back in. So we're going to do from outside permit IP any any, and then we're going to assign it to the outside interface ingress. All right. So that should be it. Pretty straightforward. With the ACO, you can see the configuration by when you do that from the command line, it's a lot faster from clicking around on the web interface if you prefer the command line. Next, we're going to do the port address translation for both web and database server. If you remember, again, back in the VNMC mode, VNMC doesn't really give you a choice where you want to place your NAT statement in, whether it's section 1, 2, or 3, being a twice NAT or object NAT. But when you configure this on the CLI, you have complete freedom. So let's first do our web server with the web to outside. And here you have a option to specify after auto, which is the section three of your NAT table. For the source, it's gonna be dynamic since we're gonna pad it out with any padded to interface outside. We can specify DNS. And again, just one more command for a database to outside. Also going to put after auto source dynamic any right here. It looks like I have to create an object group. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Our object network, we call it map 182.16.128.18. And then host 182.16.128.18. Go back to the NAT statement with the DB outside after auto source dynamic any and then map 1.16.128.18 dns so sure run that pretty straightforward if you're familiar with the nat syntax of the twice nat okay, if you do show nat table and you can see both of our nat configuration commands are shows up in the section three of a nat table now that we have the basic configuration in place for the ACI on the NAT, we next need to assign our security profile to the VMs. The way to do that is to lock into the Nexus 1000V. First, we need to make the ASA known to the Nexus 1000V. And the way to do this is through a command V service node. And then we can just come up with the name. We just want to keep it consistent with the actual ASA name. So tenant1, DC1, F1, ASA1 with type of ASA. Next we configure the IP address and this is the internal interface IP address of the ASA and not the management. So make sure you get that one, uh, give it the correct IP there. And as far as the adjacency, it's gonna be a layer two adjacent and depending on if you want, are using the traditional VLAN or VXLAN for the inside VLAN of your ASA. Then you need to pick the correct option accordingly, but for us it's a VXLAN. And that's going to try to tie it back to a bridge domain. And our bridge domain is called VXLAN 6010 tenant 1. Okay. And the last option that you can do is fail mode, whether you want it to fail open or fail close if the ASA is not reachable. So for us, we want a strict security, so we want to fail close. Next, we need to create a port profile with the security profile ties to that. Let me see if I can just copy what we already have with the port profile. So I'm going to show on port profile and see if I can locate right here, VXLAN 6010. So it's just a generic switch port mode access. So let me bring up Notepad. Now we're going to insert ASA into the traffic path. This one, the first one is going to be for the web. So we just copy this in here first. And then we need to tie it to a organization level. So here we created the ASA at the root tenant one, DC one, and app one. Again, if you're familiar with VSG, this is very similar to that. Then we associate it to the V service node that we just created with, let's see if we can just go. Let's do tenant one, type it out, DC one, app one, and ASA one. And then you have to specify the security profile. 
So we just show run interface here. For our web, we have a security profile called sec profile app one web. So make sure the the name are identical. And then let me do show run port profile and then I'm gonna copy that out. Instead of web, we're gonna specify DB. Organization level is the same since it's pretty much the same ASA, but we have a different security profile created for the database server. So we pick a security profile for the DB and just copy and paste. All right, so the port profile should have been pushed up a support group to the vCenter right now. So now we need to assign the port groups to the VMs network adapter. So you want to do that in bulk. You can go to networking, right click on the Nexus 1000V, go manage host, select all the hosts that where your VMs are located. And in your last page here, we can migrate the VM to those port groups. Okay, as soon as you do that, essentially this will, this will place the VM behind those security profile interface and any related config that ties to that interface will be enforced to the traffic that we're trying to get through the ASA. All right, so those hosts are successfully assigned to those port profile. Just to verify the status, we can do show v service detail. And right here it shows you the license information since Although we have two ESXi server or two module, only module three has an active VM that's currently using the ASA1000V. That's why the license count is only shows up for module three and it's based on the socket, number of a CPU socket on the ESXi server. The status or the state is alive. That means the ASA is reachable from the VSM. And also you can see here the two servers that we have the Port profile assigned to is web one and web two. Okay, so now we can go ahead and jump onto web one server. Let's bring up the terminal windows and we can do some basic ping test to ASA inside interface and see it's pingable. You can ping the web two, which is on the same subnet, and that's also pingable, although that's not really relevant. The fact that we have ASA in there because it's the same subnet. It would have been VSG that will block the traffic. And then we're going to ping the next top gateway or the upstream switch. But let me bring up the interface to that switch and then do a debug IP XCMP so we can see what IP is coming from when it hit the switch. 128.1. You can see it's pingable. And if you go to the back here, you can see the switch saying the IP is coming from 128.16, which is our padded IP to the ASA outside interface. And again, this is coming from the web servers. We also should be able to ping right now to the internet. And if we bring up a web browser, trying to go to cisco.com, and you can see we can successfully get out to the internet. If we go back to the ASA and do show xlate, you can see there's a lot of translation going on, as well as the show con, and these are all the connection that the host created or the essay created for the host where it tries to get out to the cisco.com. Okay, so that's for the web one. Web two will pretty much behave the same way. So I'm going to skip testing that host. Now we're going to get onto the database server. And so far we have not assigned the port profile that we created for the database servers to the DB1 VMs yet. Just to show you that if the VM does not have a port profile or secure profile assigned to it, it cannot really use the ASA. Although you can ping the ASA inside interface because that traffic actually terminates on the ASA and not going through the ASA. But if you try to ping through the ASA to the upstream switch, you can see that it's failing. Okay, in order to let the, or allow DB1 to utilize the ASA, we need to assign the correct port profile that has the security profile associated with it to the DB1. So we're gonna go back quickly to our vCenter here, and then on the DB1, we're going to edit the network adapter and let it use the tenant one DB1 right here. Click OK, make sure it goes completed. And then we can try to ping 128.1 again, and you can now see that the ping succeeded. 
and the switch seeing the ping is coming from 128.18 which is the pad ip that we assign for the database security profile okay we can it should be able to also ping out to the internet and let's try to go to cisco.com just like how we did on the web one you can see that is failing and if you go back to the ASA and do show log deny. Now you can see since the reason that the DB1 could not get out because all the traffic by the ICMP is being blocked and this, this particular traffic right here is the DNS lookup when the DB1 is trying to look up the cisco.com name and since it's being blocked that's why it's failing on the web browser. Okay, I can do show net just to make sure we get uh, all the hits as well as the show access list. You can see all the hits right here as well, which is the ingress of the web interface and the ingress of the DB as well as some of the denies on the DB interface. And these are pretty much the ping return packet. Okay, the other thing that you notice right here is compared to the VNMC mode is you have a complete control over the name of pretty much everything you configure right here is ACL. Back in the VNMC mode, the name can be pretty long and hard to read. But here, since you have a complete control on what the name could be, you can make it nice and short and basically keep your configuration clean that, that way. Okay, so let's go back onto the VNMC real quick before we finish off the video and see what it looks like now that we have the security profile configured. So usually that would be located under resource, actually uh, policy management. Tenant one, DC one, app one, and edge firewall security profile. And you can see right here, these are the two names that we configure on the ASA under the security profile interface. And it also get pushed from the ASA to the VMC since it ASA has the admin privileged account that it can lock in and add the security profile to the VNMC. See so it shows up right here. And you can't even look through although you wouldn't see much because this is not configured from the from the VNMC. So if you go to the resource management and then manage resources, we go to DC1 app1. You can look at the ish firewall. Although if you look under edge security profile, you don't really see anything here. And like I mentioned earlier in the previous video, this inside outside interface configuration is pretty much irrelevant. But as long as the config state is applied and state and associated and reachable we are pretty much in good shape and we just verify that the traffic is getting through no problem so at this point you should be very familiar with the concept of security profile and security profile interface especially how it gets created when the ASA is in the SDM mode and this is one main difference when you compare the ASA 1000V to a traditional or physical ASA so that's pretty much wraps up our video on ASA 1000V basic security profile in ASDM mode using CLI. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmins.com and I will see you guys in the next video.